Hey everybody, I wanted to talk today real briefly about uh, system.text.json. Now, if you're like me and you've recently created an application in ASP.NET Core 3, uh, you probably were aware that there was a change, at least they announced it a while ago, uh, but you might have found that there were some problems or some differences in behavior that you weren't expecting. Uh, so this video is intending to just review briefly the article that Microsoft came out with that specifically addresses this. How do you migrate code from newtonsoft.json to system.text.json if that's something you wanted to do? And I wanted to talk about and highlight the differences that I think are most likely to impact .NET developers. So it's I think it's important to understand the, the driving force behind uh, system.text.json. It was written uh, with performance in mind first and foremost, at least that's what I understand. Uh, so as they were refactoring newtonsoft.json, they found uh, they couldn't refactor it or change it without introducing breaking changes, which to them, I mean, you can't break a library like, like newtonsoft.json. It's probably the most, I think it's the most downloaded library on NuGet. In order to do that, they also adopted a policy of strictness. And what I mean by that is that system.text.json strongly follows the RFC 8259, the JSON standard. So some of the things that you were able to get away with when deserializing using newtonsoft.json, you can't do in system text JSON anymore. So let's talk about the strictness that I mentioned, the things that you can't do in system text.json uh, compared to newtonsoft.json. Uh, so First of all, newtonsoft.json, when deserializing JSON into a .NET object, it would take all sorts of shortcuts. You could use properties with different cases. Uh, so the, the case of the property, the typing of the property didn't have to be the same as the property you were deserializing to. As long as it uh, was a case insensitive match, it would deserialize. It would also ignore com things like uh, comments in JSON, which aren't supported by the spec and aren't super common to see anyways, but worth mentioning if you have JSON with comments, I suppose. It would also take property names that were enclosed in single quotes, double quotes, or no quotes at all. And according to the JSON standard, the only acceptable one is double quotes. Um, another interesting thing that it would do is not, newtonsoft.json would often type coerce. So if you were getting a one as an integer, from your JSON and you were trying to deserialize that property into a string, uh, it would just do it. It would just call two string and you'd get a one in there and vice versa. It would also take a string one and uh, deserialize it to an integer. That doesn't happen anymore by uh, automatically. It doesn't happen at all. You'll get a runtime error. Another thing that will be different is if you rely on built-in types like uh, time span DB null, uh, data table even. That's probably common for some people that were transitioning to uh, MVC or Web API code back in the web forms days, right? Web forms, data tables everywhere. Uh, it doesn't support them by default. You have to actually uh, implement a custom converter. For those cases, I would tend to stick with newtonsoft.json. It also doesn't automatically serialize or deserialize to uh, non-public properties or fields. So your property has to be public, uh, and it has to be writable to be deserialized to, and it has to be readable as a public property to be de to be serialized into JSON. Uh, might be a bit different if you're used to uh, serializing and deserializing fields, for example. So let's talk about uh, some of my favorite objects in newtonsoft.json, jobject, jtoken, uh, things like that. So system.text.json does expose something like that. They call it a JSON document. Uh, I think that the big change that people are going to find versus something like jobject is that it is totally immutable. Once it's read, it actually can't be written back to. Uh, in order to write something to it, you have to actually convert it into a uh, writable type, write some properties to it, write, you know, change properties on it, and then, um, you know, re-serialize it into JSON. That might be confusing for people who are used to, like me, just taking J objects, modifying them, uh, and then sending them back or serializing them to, presenting them to a database, whatever the case may be. Uh, if you're used to reading and writing from J object, uh, you're gonna find JSON document uh, probably is just different. The immutability thing alone uh, being the big showstopper there. And again, it goes back to performance. One of their design goals was high performance. And according to their documentation, JSON, doc, JSON document was made read only partially for, for, for performance reasons. Another interesting part about JSON document is uh, if you create one, it's expecting you to dispose it. It actually implements iDisposable. Uh, kind of different, I didn't expect that, but um, it's a thing. 
Uh, personally, me, I'm probably going to use newtonsoft.json for the time being if I'm manipulating JSON objects like I always have. If I really need the performance or if I need to save that, save that memory space, uh, I can always refactor away from it. Um, but for my purposes, newtonsoft.json, uh, jobject, jarray, jtoken, they're still just fine with me. The last thing I'll mention in this video is writing custom converters. Custom converters in newtonsoft.json I don't know about you, but I always found them to be rather confusing. I have to look up, anytime I have to write one uh, or read one, I have to look up what half the stuff does. Uh, call me stupid, call me silly. I just, to, to the, for the life of me, I'm not really able to understand this API very well. I, I don't use it a lot. Usually once I, it's one and done, I just, you know, write it and then I use it and then I, you know, write some tests for it and then forget about it, right? It's just one of those things that I never, uh, never remember. But I will say, comparatively speaking, that the uh, JSON converters in system text JSON are really a pleasure to read and write. So let's briefly look at a JSON converter as written in system text JSON. So just taking the example right off this uh, right off their page, I see that they have uh, they have two methods: a uh, read and write. You'll notice that the UTF-8 JSON reader that's passed into the method. Uh, is has this ref keyword in front of it. That's because it's a ref struct type, a struct that's passed by reference, and they do that for performance reasons. So this one is implementing some custom behavior uh, based on the property name of the particular token that you're, the value that you're reading. Uh, and I, I think this API is really clean and really easy to understand. Uh, again, compared to JSON converter code, which I think is a nightmare to look at and maintain uh, from newtonsoft.json, I think it's a real pleasure. So um, I'll end by talking, do you need to do any, do you need, do you feel like you really need to convert? And I, for me, the answer is the question, the same question as, uh, do I need to go from Entity Framework 6 to Entity Framework Core just because there's a new library? No. There's a ton of existing code out there that, for my purposes, is all going to be newtonsoft.json, uh, and it's going to take and it's going to use newtonsoft.json unless there is a super compelling reason to go to system.text.json. Again, uh, they did, they rewrote it for performance reasons, and that was their main drive. That was the main reason, the main driving force behind why they made this refactor. Uh, if your application is doesn't require uh, such high performance, either faster or you know faster deserialization and serialization, uh, or uh, using less of a memory footprint, I wouldn't bother. Uh, I still use web, I still write web forms code, so that's not going away anytime soon. And neither is Newtonsoft.json. So if you're using ASP.NET Core three, uh, you get System Text JSON by default. Uh, you can opt in to using Newtonsoft's JSON. Uh, which is something I don't see myself doing unless I really need to share code or share behavior uh, from libraries that use newtonsoft.json. Uh, the other thing that you can do is continue to use uh, system text JSON as a thin, thin veneer over newtonsoft.json. Uh, the article will talks about how you can actually implement system text JSON ser uh, converters to uh, use newtonsoft JSON under the hood. Uh, for my purposes, I'll probably just stick to using system text JSON for ASP.NET Core 3 libraries and onward. Uh, as far as the previous implementation, uh, previous things, ASP.NET Core 2 and below are concerned, I have no plans personally to move forward with a refactor to system text JSON just because it's available. Uh, I hope you found the content in this video interesting. Uh, if you want to see more of it, please subscribe. I plan on doing more of this. This is a, one of my goals in 2020, which is why I'm before the camera right now.